is on allergies, and I got so much incredible things to tell you what happened this past five days. Good morning, everybody. My name is Dr. Patrick Flynn, and welcome to this morning's A Different Perspective. I am always so excited you guys join me on this Saturday morning because so many incredible things happen every week, don't they, Travis? We just have great announcements that go on consistently, and I'm so excited to share some of the great things that have happened this past five days, but on top of it, the things that are going to happen in the near future and things we're going to project out for the next couple of years. It has been absolutely mind-blowing. I'm telling you now, guys, if you think that you can't live your dreams, don't listen to those people because I'm kind of blown away every day, wake up going, this is what's really happened in my life. <laughs> and, and just so thankful every day. I thank God every day for that. I pray for wisdom and pray for guidance. And it's fantastic to see what has evolved over the years. And this week was no different. This week, we had an incredible opportunity for many things. And I got a call um, from, I believe, one of the greatest journalists and uh, he's also produced several different movies and been made multiple different things. And uh, Del Big G called me and said, hey, I uh, would like you to jump on the show. So if you look at here, I was on the Highwire this past Thursday. Uh, you can go to thehighwire.com. As you guys know, I've brought in Del uh, Big Tree to Green Bay. I've spoken on with May Stages. He wanted uh, my expertise and my influence and also my opinions when it came to the hormonal issues that are going on there in the whole uh, community of transgender and the homo aspect of it. So I shared some clinical experience. I shared some ideas. Um, it has been received massively well all the way through the world. I've had multiple people, and I might, when I say multiple, I've had thousands of people reach out recently, but also I had some other big organizations call me and say, hey, I loved your ideas. I love what you're sharing. I love that you have clinical evidence. Could you please just come on and share some ideas? And I said, absolutely, that'd be fantastic. But thank you, Dell, for having me on the segment of your show. I do appreciate it. I'm a very big fan and financial supporter of, the, of ICANN, which has been doing wonderful things for our children when it comes to fighting for you know, all things that we've had to even fight for the last three years, which we, which we know have been coming for a long time. So he has done a wonderful job. Please do me a favor, go to thehighward.com. Just get there, watch your show every, every Thursday. It's incredible. It's part of my normal uh, process to listen to because he puts some amazing doctors and people on there all the time. And there was this very devastating story of somebody that was trying to detransition. And now uh, she is in a very bad health state and we're gonna help her. And then what we're gonna do is this, we're gonna help her and then we're gonna actually watch the things happen and have her change and get back healthy. And I'm very confident of what we can do with them and that's why it's gonna be exciting to watch her progress through this process. So thank you once again, Dell, for doing that. I do appreciate it. Um, then some other things that happened, which was great. Uh, all of a sudden, um, I got reached out to be on another very influential, um, let's say YouTube YouTuber who has roughly 1.5 million people on her website and her name is Pearl and her whole YouTube page is just pearly things. She's got about 1.5 million followers, subscribers on there. Plus she has a reach of probably 20 to 30 million with all of her other pages that way. Uh, she actually does wonderful podcasts, great interviews. You can see she's had made people there from, from everywhere, from Andrew Tate to Jordan Peterson to other big people that have been an influence on not only masculinity, but also just health and, and uh, uh, relationships and stuff like that. And uh, it's kind of great. My material, um, you know, she actually loved our material, so she interviewed me. And it, was, it was a great interview. I went for almost an hour and 45 minutes. She'll be putting that up on her page, and then we'll be sharing it clipped in ours and everything, And which reminds me. Uh, as Pearl's going to put that out, there's probably be a lot of people that are going to search my YouTube channel. I, ours recently, we just got taken down, and so we had to start another one, except for there's another one that's kind of not mine. But just understand, there's a new YouTube ch channel that's going to be coming up. We'll share the link because we know people are going to find it. And just for some reason, YouTube just doesn't like me. <laughs> just something about I mean, you can basically almost watch pornographic things on YouTube, and it follows with their guidelines. Do you know that if you, you even talk about the basic side effects of shots, guess what happens? They basically wipe you off. And that's why Del Big Tree's Highwire is not on there. But the idea is this, is it's quite incredible how they're so, 
Um, we do have, we did put up a new channel because we are going to do different things on that related to the topics. But uh, first of all, let's bring the graphic back up there, Travis uh, Pearl. Um, just pearly things. She's got an incredible channel. Uh, I actually like it. She's really here from Chicago. She's now based out of England. Um, it's great because she does podcasts, interviews, debates, vlogs. It's great. She has some great material and I encourage you to go watch it and uh, I'm going to be on there soon. So thank you, Pearl, for having me on. That was absolutely incredible and fun. Um, another thing that happened this past week was uh, the fact that uh, all of a sudden um, I got a, I got a Instagram message. So no joke, guys. I, I look at your Instagram messages like crazy. And all of a sudden, um, there was this person that reached out from a massive company over in Dubai. And we had a nice uh, meeting with them. Uh, we're going to start doing stuff with them. But also we got another uh, a message from a, a company from Dubai that wants me to come over and speak. And so it would take for you to come over and share your ideas over here because we actually love your material. And it was fantastic. So I have two people, two major companies, some big companies, and we're talking some big companies. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of people, money, influence in Dubai. And so they said, we'd like to fly you over here. So nice thing is, so I had one uh, with my team. There's a pretty huge company that's connected not only in uh, Europe, but other places that uh, said, hey, listen, we'd like your ideas to come over here. I said, sure, I'll go to Dubai. I'll go hang out. It'll be kind of cool. And then to have another massive company reach out and said, listen, we believe that your information would help all of our employees greatly. Would you be interested in coming over and speaking and stuff? And I'm like, cool. So it seems like our message just seems to resonate with people from Wisconsin to California, and I know there's a ton of states on right now. And nice things, guys, we're broadcasting from TikTok to Instagram to you know YouTube right now. Uh, for some reason, uh, you know, Travis, isn't that funny? Our Wellness Way YouTube page never gets taken down, but if it has my name on it, it gets taken down. It's just kind of crazy. If, if someone puts my stuff up there and uh, it, it doesn't get taken down, but if I put it up there, it's, uh, I must have some really good haters that are just liking it. So, <laughs> but that's okay. That's the nice thing about what we do. But the nice thing is, when you got good information, it doesn't matter. I have to remind people this. Um, it was only when Brandon came to me, and you guys know the story. He came to me and said, Uncle Patrick, we, we got to get you on media. I'm like, ah, I even fought him. I literally fought him. And, um, but then he developed a great media team that just shares our information. And I just get up and, and prepare and talk and share the stuff that I've been doing for 24 years and how it started off with just me. And now we have hundreds of doctors and hundreds of practitioners and offices all over. And no joke, I can honestly tell you, uh, one of the plans is we will end up having a clinic in Dubai and stuff. So I said, it's uh, Wellness Way principles are going to spread over. But I know I just call it the Wellness Way principles. It's just health. It's all this, what people are looking for. And because it's coming from a different perspective, um, I can communicate in a way that makes people go, eh, that stuff makes sense. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes I don't like the way he says it, but it still makes sense. <laughs> so, oh, but another part that's going to affect this show that I'm so excited to tell you guys about and, uh, um, but I was on the phone with her last night um, because we have now brought on another incredible person to join our investigative journalist team, but also she will be a part of the show. One thing that I always love is the fact that um, when you watch Dell Big Tree show, they have the Jackson Report. I think the Jackson Report is phenomenal. I think Dell brings, like I said, great experts on and also has a great reporting with the Jackson Report. Well, I'm like, I've always loved that. So I wanted to find my own Jackson. And it was great. And she was hired. And she'll be joining our team. Her name is uh, Megan. She's been on the show before, Megan Rudshaw. She's also a lawyer, but also has a degree in natural health. She's very, very, very intelligent, very brilliant uh, woman who does wonderful things, plus has a law degree, which is great. So we'll have some great discussions on the aspect of you know the, the politics of healthcare, the politics of medicine, uh, and just also other natural healthcare things. So I'm so excited to be bringing on Megan as a journalist, but also on the show here. So the show continues to expand. Uh, people don't realize that, yes, my Instagram gets millions of hits per week from different videos and everything, but the show is the one that broadcasts and gets the major aspects because I get the full you know, length content of the stuff I'm trying to get out there. So please do me a favor, tell people about A Different Perspective. Um, it grows every month. I'm very excited about it. So to bring on Megan, to have her on is going to be just exciting because she's been on there. She does a wonderful job. She's so detailed to the T and um, I'm excited to bring her on and actually expand upon our show to bring you guys the greatest information so you can consistently be taking control of your own health so you don't have to listen to anybody. You know what I'm saying? I always tell people, all I do is put out information and then guess what happens? You can, you can watch it. You don't have to watch it. You can, you can cut it apart. Uh, it's kind of funny. Um, I didn't realize this. And Travis, I didn't realize this. I remember we talked about 
man, there's more pages of me popping up than ever in crazy. I think there's a bigger media team out there putting stuff out me there than ours itself. Next thing you know, there's pages popping up and Dr. Flynn, I'm like, okay, cool. So obviously some of the information that we are sharing from the aspect of health is really resonating with people that they're clipping it and bringing different things. I'm cool with that. I know a lot of people say, Doc, is, is this your page? Nope, uh, not my page, but they're just seem to be putting our stuff out there. So thank you for all you guys that are doing that. I'm cool with that. You know, just as, as long as you don't try to sell anybody anything. You know, if they, I always watch this, they'll, they'll send like, you know, here's a special on crypto or blah, blah, blah. I'm like, nah, that, that's not me. If you guys know my show is just purely informational, I try to show you things, I try to show you things that you can do, um, that you can just take control of your own health. You're never gonna get uh, uh, that kind of aspect from me. So that being said, as we give you great information, like as we add to our, to our stuff, guess what guys, go to our newsletter because Megan will be also doing some great investigative journalists. All you have to do is scroll down and all the wonderful articles and things that we put out every single week and multiple times a week, just type in the name right there and it will be fantastic. Once again, it's just consistent information that we want to give you guys to give you guys the aspect to control your health. All right, so and as you saw on there before, look up to the top right, you'll see the Find the Clinic because the greatest thing that I always want you to guys know, we do videos, we do uh, newsletters, we do everything, but there's the key right there. You look at all those wonderful practitioners that we have offices and we continue to expand more and more offices all over the US every single month. We keep getting bigger and bigger every month. We have more practitioners, more doctors, more nurses, more, more um, everybody that does the wellness way kind of care. And you can find them within our Find a Clinic. So excited for that, to know us that all time. And you will see the expansion that we do. So I said, as I said before, kind of living your dreams. But living your dreams, guys, always so means this. Like I've always said, as you guys know, I'm a person of faith. Uh, um, this is just me. Like I said, it's kind of great that we do these things. But you know something there, I would say there's also, whenever there's a yin, there's a yang. And I know a lot of people are really big in the, the, to the fact that, and even when I was talking to Pearl, you'll see on my interview, um, she's only 27 years old and she gets attacked massively and, and she's wondering how you handle it. I'm like, you know something, with, with, with good, there's evil. You know, saying with positivity, there's negativity. You just gotta understand that. I understand there's people and I'm okay with that. I understand people don't like what I say. I'm good with that. I don't like what a lot of people say, but you know, that's the only difference between me. I'm a very big free speech person. I've invited uh, people many times. You can, you know, one video that went nuts, absolutely nuts, is like, um, I said, listen, somebody I care about, I would never like get a mammogram. Now what I meant was, I've done enough research and talked to enough people that are in that field to go, eh, I'm just gonna, my opinion is this. And here's what happens. I have an opinion. Here's the cool part. Always remember this, guys. Whenever you go to the doctor and they, they tell you something, they always say you can go for a what? A second opinion. Do you know why? Because the first thing they gave you is opinion. I just love how people think their opinion matters more. No, once again, especially when it comes to some form of healthcare. If there is a healthcare medical matrix, it's there. You, the people live in a false reality and they project it. And we've seen that over the last three years that there's a lot of lies out there. So all I do is put there going, hey, I've done enough research saying, listen, somebody I care about, I'd never do it. Man, people lost their mind, okay? Now, once again, there's people, half people lost their mind, half people are like, oh my goodness. And then what I did is I actually brought somebody on a show and said, listen, let her give her opinion on it that way. And she was a breast cancer surgeon. Uh, but also I've talked to, I will underestimate 50 plus people like her in other degrees and also people that were um, x-ray techs and people that actually understood the, the aspect of uh, ultrasound, they used to do them. And I formed my opinion. Uh, and the great thing is I just have data to back it. And then I said, listen, here's the stuff. Now go out and make a choice. Because you gotta remember, anytime that you give an opinion, there, you gotta be ready for some critical aspects. But see, it's, it's what you wanna accomplish in your life. Because if you think about it, I love this. Now remember, this is still, we talked about last week. This is at the end of my hallway. This is actually a picture that is up in my office. I actually picture it's a writing on the wall. There's only one way to avoid criticism. Do nothing, say nothing, and be nothing. Well, I've always said this, you know, uh, I said, listen, is I want to do something that has an impact. Now, once again, the impact, once again, is gonna allow people to make their own choices. So I want to do something, you know what I'm saying? And I'm obviously gonna say something because the one thing that I work on extremely well is communication. I, I can honestly tell you, and I'm a fan of this guy massively, and I've had people on my Instagram saying, I can't believe you like this misogynist. Well, I'm a big fan of Jordan Peterson, all right? Jordan Peterson, uh, to me, has done amazing things, and he talks about that men should be very articulate in the ability to communicate. And I'm like, true, 
I spend a lot of my time with my ideas, writing them down and, and preparing them for you and sharing them so you can go, that makes sense. But sometimes what makes sense doesn't mean it's easy to accept. See, so I, when I talked about last time about mammograms, um, and once again, here's what happens, I'll tell you. I'm very cool if you decide to get a mammogram. But if you ask me my opinion, I'm gonna give it to you. And because you know why? Because there's other tools that are out there. So not only to give you opinion, I can give you a different direction. I can give you a different perspective. So therefore, and then what you choose, it's up to you. I had a doctor call me this past week and said that they have a loved one that's in their 30s that got breast cancer. Now here's what happens. As we talked about and you lost, you saw um, Dr. Simmons that was on here before, is regardless of what kind of breast cancer is, they're gonna go to massive aggressive treatment. They do it with everybody. And as she even, and she's even said this, she, she looked at them and she goes, the majority of them are not needed. That's her opinion. She's got some expertise in that, so I just let her share the opinion. Now they're wrong, there's a lot of people saying, well, that's wrong. Well, no, that's an opinion. If you wanna get a second, third, fourth opinion, go for it. But you gotta get those all ideas. And that's why I tell people, I've always welcomed different and, and uh, um, opposite ideas on the show. I'm, Travis, how many times have we, I can literally show you, and you ask Miranda, and you ask Joshua, and you ask Brandon and these guys, I literally, if somebody is critical of what I say, I'm like, hey, do me a favor, come on the show. Do you know not one person, not one person has ever took me up on that because I will be very respectful to everybody because just me, remember, I believe that respect is given, trust is earned. See, oh, that, there we go, I gotta talk about that in a little bit, but here's what happens. Respect is automatically given. If you're a human, you need to give people respect, period. People say, respect's earned, that's not true. That's not true, trust is earned. Respect should be given to everybody. That's why I can respect somebody that has extremely different ideas than I do. Extremely different. It doesn't matter if it's political, it doesn't matter if it's healthcare, even though they're kind of connected, and, but it's just a different idea and a different perspective. I'm cool with it, okay? Now, that being said, as we continue to do things that way, we're talking about the fact of, okay, now as we have these things, we, on the thing, there's, nothing, there's only one way to avoid criticism, do nothing, say nothing, and be nothing. But see what happens is, everybody, every one of you guys want to have an impact on somebody. No joke, if you're a parent, you want to have an impact on somebody, even if it's just your children. But see, a lot of people think they're not influential. But that's not true. Just to let you guys know, somebody's always watching you. You don't have to have millions of followers. You don't have to have a show. You don't have to have a big company for people to understand that people are following you. They really are. You don't believe me? You guys ever had kids and all of a sudden, um, all of a sudden you said a swear word and the kid repeated it. Trust me, you're influential. We've all been there, you know what I'm saying? It's like, it's kind of funny. And you have influence over people. And by doing that, once again, you know, what you do with yourself is what, who's gonna become and what you're gonna do later in life. And the idea is this, is, and I've always said this, I'm hoping that the ideas and the things that I've done and put out there actually create a legacy. And I love this because I'm obsessed with it. You know, so what is legacy? I, I talked about last week. And then people sent me massive messages saying, oh my goodness, Doc, I absolutely loved that view of it that way. But I want to go a little deeper today as we get into our next part of everything. Now. But if you look at this way. What is a legacy? Well, here's, here's, let's extend it a little bit more. A legacy is meant to outlast you. Oh, think about that. Travis, come back to me on this. There is a, they, they study successful individuals. And one of the major characteristics that they have is delayed gratification. See, because sometimes to create a legacy, you have to plan 10, 15, 20 years in the future, but here's what happens. You may not even make it 10, 15, 20 years in the future. There's things I do today that I know that my grandkids will benefit from, that my great grandkids will benefit from, great, great grandkids will benefit from. It's not a joke. So I'm obsessed with legacy. I'm obsessed with leaving a tradition that can continue to go on regardless. So let's go back to it. So a legacy is meant to outlast you. It is how you will be celebrated even after you pass. Leaving a legacy means you are impacting future generations by the way you lived your life and the decisions you made. Leaving a legacy is about more than yourself. It is about creating a positive future for the people who will come after you. See, and that's why when people always talk about you know, Doc, you do so much and you're very boisterous about political things. Of course, because, you know, there's one thing that I know that's for sure. We're all gonna die. You know, I know it's really funny. Everybody's getting big into AI and I watch, and I watch this. And I, and I watch Elon Musk uh, this morning talk about that. The reason why some of these um, 
tech companies and super nerds are big in the AI because they, they, they figure that it's going to make you live forever. Do you understand? Now, this is just me. I want to live as long as possible. Do I want to live forever? I don't think so. I think what I believe from a, from a you know, godly standpoint and from a Christian standpoint, yeah, yeah we, we got some things to do here. I'm enjoying the process, enjoying life every day. Remember, my motto is enjoy the journey, build memories. But I think it'll be time to go. Do you understand? Know this is me. Just remember, once again, my beliefs. You know what I'm saying? Something I think. It's my opinion. So I'm like, do I want to live, you know, to 100? I hope so. If I don't, I kind of know the end. You know what I'm saying? I believe I know the end because it's just faith that I have. And I always tell, we, we always, we always um, joke about it here. Um, it's like, here's my personal belief in faith that way. And you're wrong. I could pass away and I could be totally wrong. But I'm willing to die and believe that. So that's okay. And I'm okay with somebody who has a different belief. I really am. But where it comes where it's different is the fact that it's like, okay, when you try to force something on me that I believe will lead to a bad future. For example, that's when I look at what happened over the last three years. Um, I can honestly tell you, no joke, some of the things are still going on. I got messaged by somebody uh, this morning. Well, actually, it was really early in the morning, but she just got let her got job, her go, I will cover her name, but I got a huge uh, um, message, and I will read it to you really quickly that way. Um, hi, this is, and it's a, I am a niece of, no joke, some of our longtime patients here. Um, Mary told me, oh, sorry, told me to contact you because uh, um, she works at the local hospital here. They removed the mask mandate for everyone except for unvaccinated employees. Uh, okay. I wonder what it says that in the Constitution. We were told that if we do not comply, we get two weeks unpaid suspension and we still do, didn't comply. It's considered volunteer resignation. We feel like we are uh, getting discriminated against. Uh, patients that are unvaccinated do not have to wear a mask. Do you understand the medical field is probably one of the biggest people that discriminate against anybody, um, especially their workers, even when there wasn't the last few three years. Okay, other departments within the hospital are not enforcing it. I got walked out Wednesday to start my suspension. I believe I'm the only one so far. I am told the hospital could lose funding for Medicare. Ah, so money, okay? Um, because it's government. If they do not enforce this during this last week, I was talked to four times by my manager and director. They gave me no documentation. I told them I will not leave without an escort. My manager said, I trust you, you can go. I said, nope, someone will come walk me out. My manager said, okay, and I waited for me to gather my things and walk me out. Um, do you feel that there's anything for legal action? Well, what I did right away, because I'm willing to put my money where the mouth is, is I'm contacted our wonderful civil liberties attorney who we have won every case in Wisconsin. It's fantastic. I messaged him and said, I'm ready for a fight again. I'm ready for a fight again. Now, let me say this to you. I'm going to be very sincere and very honest about this. Everything in this show, everything that I've ever done has been self-funded. By what? My own money. I don't take money from anybody. It's like I earn money from my businesses because I own a lot more than Wellsway. I own my, earn money from my, from my businesses and then I reinvest it. And then I reinvest it and I get more money. It's called capitalism, not crony capitalism like medical field and politics and stuff of like that. I'm actually go to work. I create a value. They get money back. It's kind of cool. Okay. So I take my money and I invest it into this. When I pay the lawyer, guess what happens? What do I get from the lawyer? I get the ability for that lawyer to defend somebody that may be infringed upon their rights. And then what happens? If this is illegal and we win, guess what happens? Legacy continues. Because why? I believe in freedom. I believe in freedom. There's major discrimination. There's major, because it seems like it's just a mask. Remember, it was just a mask at one time and then it was just a shot. You know what's really funny? You know, it's, uh, it always starts off with a little bit. Just accept this and we won't go any farther. That happened in the whole gay community. And look what happened now. They're, they're trying to, you know, if you speak against it, which I always do, you say, I'm going to speak against it. I don't think anybody should go through transitional things. That's why I was on Dell's show. But also I said, it's like, it's just this. You say, it's just one. It's just this. And next thing you know, you know, they're trying to do major stuff with this and discriminate against good people that are trying to do their jobs and do it well. This young lady just, uh, once again, first of all, because she stood up for what was right, 
guess what happens? Now I'm gonna stand up for her. And I will take my own personal money, literally personal money, and it will cost me thousands of dollars. But it happens this, but if they've done something wrong, then guess what? The young lady doesn't deserve to lose her job. So, especially like I said, because Medicare won't fund it, okay? Guess what happens? Then say no. You say, I'm, it's like, see, that's the saying. It's all based on money. It's never based on what's right. So that being said, legacy, because you know why? As we continue to do those things, it's important. See, I've always said, I disagree with that. I totally disagree. I disagree with what they're doing out there. And I'm willing to stand up. I'm willing to fight. I'm willing to take the arrows. I'm willing to take the criticism. I'm willing to be called just a chiropractor. I'm willing to be called that once again, I shouldn't be speaking as things. I'm okay with that because I got one thing to say to everybody. It's right, right here. I disagree. I have the right and I'm going to, and I should, and guess what happens? I'm gonna put this out there, okay? Um, the I Disagree book became an international bestseller because it said, I disagree with the way they looked at female hormones. And then I didn't just disagree. I went into action. See, so it's not just say something, it's then do something. So I had to create a whole nother way. That's why I called it, I had to create the wellness way, a whole different way from what the way they're looking. I had to give people a different perspective. See, that's the great thing about it. As we continue to do those things, it's like, okay, I'm going to not only put my money where wealth is, I'm going to walk that walk. And the great thing is, so we started to do, as you know, I, I ended the, the Hormone Connection Seminar June 10th with my son-in-law's place uh, down in Pensacola, which we now have a new doctor, Dr. Samantha Thompson, is gonna be down there and joining. And uh, then Dr. Evan will be over in Atlanta full time uh, here in a couple months, but uh, that's a whole nother story. But I did my last Hormone Connection Seminar down in Pensacola, Florida. And what it allowed me to do was allowed me to, to now revamp some things both professionally, personally, change my schedule, stop speaking a little bit that way. But we are bringing this seminar back, but we're bringing it because what's happened over the last three years, and I have more to speak on than just hormones. We are going to now just do a couple I Disagree seminars here in the more Midwest, just a couple of them in May. Our first one will be over in um, the Minneapolis area. Uh, we have a couple offices that are joined together to do it over in Minneapolis. There is the thing. You can sign up for to the, that day. Then what you could do is then, the, so wait, 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 what is it? I gotta go back to that one, Travis. May 16th, yes. I think it's Tuesday, May 16th, I'll be speaking there. May 17th, I will be speaking over in um, Bismarck, uh, North Dakota. And uh, yeah, it'd be fantastic. Go over there. I'll be there with Dr. Hunter. And then I end the tour, just a little three-day tour, um, in St. Cloud, Minnesota, which is about 70 miles. I, I mapped it out the other day because I love, I love the Mall of America. I know it sounds weird. I just love the Mall of America. I think what happens is I just get to walk around like crazy. And then there's, there's some of my favorite restaurants over there, like People's Organics, which is a fantastic place. Get great, healthy food. And then I go and I walk around the mall. I put my headset on and then I just talk. You know what I'm saying? So I'm walking around, walking around. I've got plenty of time. It's kind of great. Look at all the stores. It's fantastic. But it's only about 70 miles. So we'll be driving there. I'll be flying back and driving to St. Cloud on a Thursday. And so I'll have a little tour on the 16th, 17th, 18th. And what I'm doing is I'm putting together my new seminar. Now, a lot of people say, Doc, I missed the Hormone Connect Seminar. My husband missed it. My spouse missed it. My friends missed it. Well, the I Discree Seminar will encompass all the hormone things in. It'll be changed a little bit. I have to shorten a little bit because the other things are put in there. But it's going to encompass all the amazing things that moved you, that made you laugh, that made your life better. So that will be there so you can go on there. But what's is more exciting, which I am so excited as we continue to add more things. Like I said, we added Megan. I'm getting more opportunities to speak all over the world. I get a, a big podcast. It's fantastic. We have three kind of great things coming out. Um, it's called I Disagree, the new book. It's called I Still Disagree. That will be out in the fall. We have our new seminar. But then we have our new podcast. We have our new podcast. And I put things out on a regular basis that really, really, once again, um, get people to think. The I disagree is just simply to say, so when they, so, and I, this is what my whole career was. The medical field, once again, the medical matrix would say this. And because most of the people are plugged in since they were little, they'd say, they just go along with it. I'm like, nope, I'm morphing this stuff. I'm morphing. I'm giving you a different perspective and saying, no, I disagree. And they're wrong. They try to silence you. They try to do everything. That's why it seems like I can't keep a YouTube channel. But the idea is this. Just because they try to silence you doesn't mean you're wrong. I stand up and say, I disagree. But see, what happens is this. We put out things that to give people an opinion. And I'm okay with people disagreeing with me. So what I've been doing on my personal page, 
Um, this is my personal page because there's a lot of people that know me, a lot of people that I'm connected to that way. So I said, listen, I want to see even what they say. So what I did is I started posting some little things like this just to start it out. And here's what was. Okay, agree or disagree? Post your comments below. And here's what happened. I believe if you remove God from society, schools, politics, family, you will see the devil show up quickly. Leave your comments below. And you're wrong. What I loved about this was this. There's people that I know that commented and got like 200 comments really quickly. And I know those people know each other and they see a different perspective. And some people said I agree, some people said I disagree. Um, and it was great because you know why? Everybody had a voice. And I said, if you say I disagree, then give your explanation. Give that person a platform to say that and respect their views, respect their perspective. See, our new podcast will put things out there. So I will be hosting the podcast. I have two co-hosts, one male, one female. And it's great because we're going to have the, my two co-hosts will be Ross and Dana. And then we're going to have about another four or five people on the panel every single time. And we're going to go around. I'm going to put out there everything that relates to what I'm talking about. See, I started out in healthcare. But you got to remember, in the school systems, I was treated like a juvenile delinquent. Do you understand? I literally had people tell me I'd become nothing in schools. Do you understand? And so everything is entwined. It really is. So we're going to talk about these things. I talked about, uh, we're going to talk about just because I deal with so much homo stuff way before it was even popular and why Just Pearly Things and other people in Dell and them have me on their show is because I've been talking about hormones. I've been talking about masculine traits and feminine traits. You go back because knowing hormones, I know what testosterone does to a male. I know what it does to a female. I know what estrogens do to a female. I know what estrogens do to a male. I've been talking about this because when they're imbalanced, it really throws off the whole system. And the system has been, with all things going on recently, you can see that. So I'm excited to bring the I Disagree podcast to people. And it's going to be just absolutely incredible. I know there's a lot of people excited about it. Because if you want to be a guest on the show, you'll, we will have a contact where you can do this because here's what happens. You'll be able to come on the show and I'll post questions and you can disagree with me uh, Right out, you can, you can agree, you can do anything you want. They said, I'm, I want to hear people's perspective. We're going to have people that are, you know, single, married. We're going to have people that are doctors, people that are natural doctors, people that are uh, for what we do, people that hate what we do. See, that's one thing. I love discussions. The minute that you silence somebody's voice, things cannot be debated. And I love debate. I love debate. Because once again, I think debate is just something that should be, you know, um, really admired because it gives people the chance to see how articulate they are. Can they share their ideas? Do they really believe what they do? Do they walk what they walk? Excuse me, do they walk what they talk? Um, but what it allows people to do is then make it their own choice. I was very, I was very, um, I was very saddened because here's what happens. I got to tell you something. I'm in a little bit of a turmoil right now. I really am. Then I have to tell you something personal. I am, I am going through a personal turmoil right now. All right, so let me explain. Let me take a little sip there of my Zevia. Yes, I already had my coffee this morning. Uh, so I'm just sipping a little Zevia. Uh, so I got a message the other day that I was invited uh, to sit up front as a VIP for Robert F. Kennedy Jr.'s announcement of, of coming out for president. And I was so thankful and everything, but I couldn't make it because I was traveling. Um, as you know, um, one of their top lawyers, Mary Holland, is a dear friend of mine. Uh, she runs Children Health Defense. I've been on RFK's you know, network multiple times. Um, and I've always said, if there's one way for me to get uh, um, more swayed to a political party would be based on the issues we dealt over the last three years or the corporate takeover of healthcare. Because here's what happens, guys. If you don't think there's a medical matrix that is taken over by big business and the government, then you are just still living in the matrix. You really are. And I've been trying to get people out of it for 24 years, and that's why you do get hate. And that's why I think I love the movie so much. That's why I think when we do our shows and I go off as Morpheus that way, I'm just trying to free all the Neos. You know what I'm And we find some Neos. It's kind of great. But the idea is this, is I sat there, and then I look at what's happening. I look at some of the possible running for the other party. Now, once again, I'm going to be very clear on this. Um, agree or disagree? Here we go. So let's talk about this. We're going to talk about the show. I think both uh, uh, parties are stupid. Agree or disagree? Put it in the comments below. That's me. I think the Democrats are stupid. I think the Republicans are stupid. I really do. I argue with both of them. I really do. So never, so if you ever um, um, 
want to ask what I stand for, I stand for the Freedom Party. And there is no party like that. You know, I'm just going to look at the Constitution and go, all right, are you infringing on the individual's rights? Um, so once again, agree or disagree. I think Democrats and Republicans are both stupid. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Let's see what the comments are in Instagram, TikTok, um, the platform, all platforms we have going right now. It's my personal opinion. I have an opinion. I think they're both morons. I do. Um, now, once again, I know why people try to get into a party because they try to identify with what they stand. I would rather put enough information out there for people to get what I think people are pretty uh, clear on where I stand on stuff. But here's the point is, so I'm going to struggle right now because RFK is somebody I'd vote for for president. But then I'm also a fan of Ron DeSantis. Okay. Um, you know, and people don't realize this. I've been very critical of Trump and I've been very honest about this. I voted for him twice. But I've been very critical of Trump because Trump actually bowed down to Pfizer and stuff, and he's the one to put Fauci in place and things like that. He should be held accountable for that. Um, I think Ron DeSantis, once again, has done some things that have been very admirable. And um, so I can actually tell you, now here's what happens. And here's the part that is a turmoil is, let's say that it became between DeSantis and Kennedy. I'd be like, who do I vote for? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Uh, because there's some major issues that I personally stand on that could get me this way, okay? And what happened over the last three years should show you that was something that really, because I've been fighting about it before even what came over the last three years. See, I have to say last three years, although it'll kick you off. But that being said, one thing that I was very saddened about, um, I got a message because um, it's kind of sad because this should make you think about things. The one thing great as you are trying to figure out who you'd like to vote for or who you'd like to believe, you have to hear all their ideas. Well, I just found out this morning uh, from some sources that are close to the party, because I have connections to it, is they're not going to allow any debates for the Democratic committee. So they won't even let RFK debate Biden or anybody else that way. Really? That, if you think he's so good, then let them share the ideas and let RFK or anyone else want to run. Let them share the ideas and let the public decide. So if you're in view of that party, you should really look at that. Watch this. I think it's wrong when you don't allow debate between not only individuals, but parties. Agree or disagree. Agree or disagree. Because I believe, you know something's funny? I believe in really stupid people should have a voice. You know Sam? I really do. And trust me, I know it sounds interesting because I'm, I'm big on the freedom. I don't care if you have a voice. It's when they start to mandate that voice, like in schools and things like that. And then they don't share the opposite voice. And if you watch the high wire, you can see what Luca had to go through when she started to have a different voice. Then people now we got violent with her, which is very scary. You know what I'm saying? But you know what is this? I'd be scared of trying to be violent with people that support guns. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, Travis, you have a gun here right now, don't you? I have my gun here. You saying? You walk into a wellness way corporate, man, you have about 20 guns and stuff. Because we've been threatened before. We have. But when it's this, so I tell people, you know, we are all concealed carry. We do it legally. We follow the rules. Once again, we follow the good rules. Um, but once again, I was like, you know, it's just there for protection. Once again, we never incite violence. Um, I can honestly tell you, I've told you before. I would have no problem with violence, but I've never been in a fight in my life. I've been prepared to fight, but it happens this, but I've never physically hit anybody, ever, not once, okay? Not even a guy. And remember, my father owned a bar at one time, and I actually had to not only be a bartender, but I had to make sure that things were, you know, calm and collective. So I've had people scream right in my face, spit in my face, swing at me, but I still just de-escalate the, the situation and remove them, you see? I'm, now, once again, if I had to, I would. I'm prepared, you see? I'm, and we also have security, too, so it makes it even better. So... That being said, voices are important. So if you disagree with me, once again, I would even give you a wonderful platform to share that. And we're going to do that in I Disagree podcast because I love discussions. I love roundtable discussions with great consenting adults that are saying, okay, listen, I'm going to come share my ideas with no consequences. There will, there, even on a show as me being um, the host, I'll be very respectful to even ideas that I am totally against and stuff. Because you know why? I believe they need to be heard. And then we can discuss things back and forth respectfully and actually let the audience decide. So that will be coming out in June. I'm very excited. I'm very excited for my 
to co-host. I'm also excited for all you guys that would like to be on it. We're going to be creating a link pretty soon. And it's going to be on the Dr. Patrick Flynn website to be able to go and uh, um, put in a request to be on a show. So watch for that. We're going to have that for everybody. Now, as we are going into our last uh, weekend of the month, we are going to get on our allergy series. It's got a couple things I want to talk about that way because our wonderful Dr. Jason and Dr. Jeremy did a fantastic job of describing the majority of allergies and things that I got. A couple more things I just want to clarify some questions that came in through the things and then we will get to our last 10%. So therefore, let's get into our major perspective on allergies today. All right, so allergies. It's been a wonderful topic. Uh, once again, we talked about when Dr. Jason and Dr. Jeremy did it, they gave you what allergies really were. Uh, just to recap, I get some kind of frustrated and I even was reviewing some of my textbooks and if you were to come to my house, um, and we're gonna be putting it at, at, in our new studios, I'm gonna put a library of everything that we have for documentation to journals and, and just let you guys know, I personally read anywhere from five to 10 journals a day. Um, I, I, I even have wonderful people just like, and I'm going to relate to Dell in this. Dell's show is, is so good because he has connections with all fields and all the, the docs that he can actually get opinions from. And I do the same thing. Now I have great internal doctors. I have wonderful scientists that I've had on the show. I have wonderful immunologists that I reach out to because immunology is my background. Uh, like I said, I went to immunology and I also went to nutrition. And like I said, then I went to care at school. So my background allows me to, to look at things from a different perspective because I was taught medically. I was. I was taught medically on, on all the immune systems. I was taught medically on all nutrition. I remember that them tell me in my nutrition classes in college that high fructose corn syrup was good for you. You saying high fructose corn syrup doesn't cause diabetes and stuff. So no joke. And you still go to school today, kind of teach you the same thing. But the idea is this is it allowed me to actually now rely on certain experts that when I was sitting and reviewing my textbooks this morning to kind of go over it. And I just find it interesting that when you read the textbooks that they get taught from. So what I literally do is not only do I continue, now people don't know this either. Do you know that I continue to take classes um, on a regular basis? I do, I sign up for them, I get credit, I get paid for them. They're all from accredited colleges that way. And what I'm always trying to do is see what they're putting out there. And so I recently took a class from an Ivy League school on uh, an immunology class and uh, it was kind of cool because I got their textbook and I'm seeing what they're teaching that way and they're not much different. They add some things through the years and they have new additions that way but they're not really much different and the topic of allergies is always so misled in the medical field because remember this, medical practice and medical research never match up unless there's finances involved. Let me say that again. Medical practice and medical research never match up unless there's finances involved which means if they can make money off it they'll publish it and put it out. If they can't, it, it means nothing to them. For example, it, it, what do I mean by allergies? Okay, if you look, the classification, what they do, and I'll even show you from something that pop up right away on a, on a research article that we're gonna talk about. Now, once again, and let's get into a little detail of it. If you look, okay, when they talk about allergies, they like to classify them in four types. Four, not one, four. And they even list them. And what they do, and that's why sometimes I get frustrated with the languages they use out there, especially in the natural world. The natural world has to stop using non-scientific documented language of how the immune system responds. Let me give you an example. There's type one, two, three, and four, hypersensitivity allergies. Okay, that's how they classify them. It's the only way they classify them. They don't call them sensitivities. They classify them as type one, two, three, and four, hypersensitivity allergies, allergic reactions. So that means it doesn't matter what immunoglobin or what T cell responds, they're allergic reactions. So I hear this a lot because here's what happens. Whenever you look at the dominant form of, of healthcare, which is a medical model, which is the medical matrix, they so focus on IgEs because there is a life-changing thing that you could die from them. You really could. And believe it or not, an EpiPen would only be the way to possibly save them. And I'm cool with that. That's why I, in the whole process, talk about communication, are big on analogies. And that's why I talk about you know, different forms of healthcare, like fire department and carpenter, because medicine can put out the fire, but you're left with a burnt up house, you need to rebuild it. And fires are preventable. See, that's why when I go speak at medical establishments, or medical schools, or medical uh, um, seminars, I will set the premise of saying, hey, listen, 
you can look at it from fire department view, but it's not the only view, it's not the only perspective. Because if you look, when you look at allergies itself, there is a type one, I agree, IgEs, and it can be deadly. It can be very deadly. So I want there to be medicine. I want there to be a form of healthcare that can protect them from dying. I agree with it, but it's not the only form of hypersensitivity allergic reactions. So let's look at this, let's, let's type in here, let's click on. Introduction to allergic diseases. Once again, just pulled this from the Journal of Revolutionary Food Sciences and Nutrition. Allergic diseases result from IgE-mediated immune response to foreign proteins, allergens. The majority of such reactions are IgE-mediated type 1 reactions. All right, stop right there. Travis, come back here. Now watch what he even says. See, you have to learn. Now remember, I'm just giving you the abstract. Once again, you can, you can actually pay for the full article. I do and stuff. When I'm not subscribed to the journal, I will literally go there. I will download it. I will pay for it. Once again, with my own money and they're being capitalistic, which is great. I'll pay for your research and I'll read it and I'll read the whole thing. I don't just read the abstract. But I want you, I'm going to read this to you again. The majority of such reactions. In that second line. Travis, does it say all? See, it doesn't say all. See, so I'm not saying that IgE is not relevant. I'm not saying that IgE shouldn't be looked at. I'm not saying that this, I'm just saying it's not the full picture. Their view of the immune system is incomplete. Just like, once again, when I was sitting around when I was 24 years old and I'm 48. Man, I'll be 49 in a couple months. August 15th. Oh, a lot of things are gonna happen, okay? But the idea is this, is I sit around and saying, you know, just measuring estradiol for a cyclic woman when there's a bunch of other hormones, in, uh, a bunch of other estrogens that should be looked at because they can contribute to health and disease very quickly. I think it's incomplete just looking at one. See, and everybody's like, that makes sense. So therefore, I'm gonna give the validity to IgE. I love testing those. I can honestly tell you, I like testing those multiple ways. I do think it could be done in the blood well. There's great labs that do that. And I do believe that skin prick has some validity and some very good things to do. But to say that's the only view of how the immune system responds to allergens is incomplete and misleading. It's just that the medical field, that's all they deal with. So they say being them being the expert, that's the only way to look at it. That's not true. And then if they get to a bunch of medical people that think the same way and say, this is the only way you should look at it, look at the consensus. Do you know why we're not a democratic country? Because people say we're a democracy. That's not true. That's not true at all. Because here's what happens this. Because then all you have to do is get just one more person than half of the group thinks. And you could agree to kill a person. You could agree to take all their stuff away from them. You could agree to, to force them in beliefs, religious, healthcare, anything like that. And that's called tyranny. You see, that's called slavery. Put those people in slavery. But do you think about this? Because then they're forced to do something that they don't want to do. And that's why I don't care what the consensus says. I really don't. You could do this. Remember, they used to say this. The consensus, the consensus back when I graduated high school until another doctor came along and said, well, I kind of disagree. Candace Perk came along, Dr. Candace Perk said, you know something? There is receptors on the immune cells that have neurotransmitters on there to be able to, to, as a messenger, which means the brain controls the immune system. And then the immune system talks back to the brain. Do you understand when I graduated high school, they thought the immune system worked independently from the rest of the body. No joke. That's why they still have the concept that's perpetuated, which is still a lie today, that the body, the immune system, our immune system is where the, it makes, the immune system makes a, a mistake and attacks its own tissue, its own normal tissue. That's where it's perpetuated that way because the immune system is independent. See, that's why I don't care if there's a consensus. I'm going, you can say the majority, but you say the majority and that's it. But you can't negate all the rest of them, especially when there's evidence to show it. So here we go. Let's go back to that, Travis. Um, in reactions, type run. Okay, individuals who develop such reactions are allergic. Yes. Those predisposed on a genetic basis to synthesize IgA to environmental allergens are a topic. Most allergic reactions are participated when a specific allergen aggr um, aggregates several IgE molecules attached to an IgE receptor on the surface of the mast cell and basophil. 
Chemical mediators are released, which lead to the individual signs and symptoms associated with allergic disease, which are hives, um, asthma, and anaphylaxis. More prolonged reactions follow in significant numbers of the other cells, including eosinophils, macrophages, lymphocytes, are drawn into sites of, of mast cell activation. Therefore, allergic diseases result from a complex interplay of immune cells, foreign proteins, and tissue inflammation. So think about that. What they basically said is Swiss watch. Swiss watch. Allergen comes in, a bunch of other gears start to work together, bring it to the area to get rid of that situation. But it's not just IgE. That's one thing. So when Dr. Jason and, and Dr. Jeremy explained that there's multiple immune responses, see, that's one thing I kind of find so funny all the time, is these are self-evident in all immunology books, every one of them. But because there is no money for them in other antibody responses, what they do is this, they focus on IgE, and then they try to downplay that the immune system is going to respond in any other way. So therefore, IgE is the only way to do it, and you need a skin prick, and you need blood, and anything else is not to look at. And, and, and you say, well, wait, and doc, and all the medical doctors say that. Yeah. Do you want some of this? Look what happened over the last three years. The majority, the majority of them complied. Yeah, behind the scenes, behind the scenes. They talked to me. Actually, it recently happened. Uh, a doc over at Aurora. I helped that, that whole crew over there um, get their rights so they didn't have to get something. The popcorn, as you guys know. And they live in the matrix to survive in the matrix. And I'm like, get out of it. And they're scared. I get it. But the idea is this. People say, doc, are you ever scared? No, it's worse than happened. You know, I guess it's really funny. Whenever I look at something bad, and trust me, I've had some bad things happen. Um, and I always sit back, and it gives me great peace. What could happen? You say, let's say this. Watch this. Let's say everybody tomorrow, and I have hundreds of employees and hundreds of people that, that are involved with all over the country. Let's say everybody walks out tomorrow and says, I quit. I mean, I've had to think that way, because obviously I do some very bold things. I say, what happens if that happens? What's the worst that can happen? Well... How did I start? I was in an abandoned warehouse, dead end street, no phone, just some ideas, no money, and I started sharing my ideas. Guys, that's how I started. That's how I started. My mother went to Office Depot and didn't have the money to do it and put $500 worth of stuff on her credit card. That's why you hear the story, I started everything on $500. And it was interesting, and I got some paper, card table because I had no front desk. I, and I just started working with people. Man, I probably violated so many rules at the beginning and I didn't even know it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I didn't care because I was like, no, I have an idea that if we get some labs done and I do these things and I adjust them and I get labs and I give these things and I get them to change their lifestyle, that their life's going to change. And it did. And I grew fast. So I always say, what's the worst that can happen? So as people put, I've had this said to me many times, well, doc, with the threats, you know, you know, what happens if somebody shoots you? Okay, then I die. Okay, well, I just have a belief, this is me personally, that Jesus is going to be there and I'm be welcomed in. Okay, so in my, in my own mind, I win again. You saying? So I kind of smile every day because I win or I win. It's tough being a winner, but it's fun being a winner because it always gives you hope and something to work towards. So therefore, as these ideas come across, just understand, I get very frustrated when I see them as things are posted and taught that they're very different than what should be put out there. Now, let's look at another one. Here we go. As we look at this research article, role of immunoglobulin G antibodies in the diagnosis of food allergies. Okay, so I want you to think about this. So as they even show about this, once again, and I pulled this from a dermatology allergic reaction because they're talking, they're trying to see how these people were having different skin issues, but they weren't responding from an IgE. See, that's happens when they, when they, when they can't come from their one consensus, they have to start looking for others and they start to study different things. So therefore, let's look at what it says. Here we go. I want to, I want to show you the whole thing. This paper presents current views on the role of immunoglobulin G antibodies in the reactions with food antigens in the digestive tract and their role in diagnosis of food allergies based on the assays of specific Ig class antibodies with a specific focus on um, contemporary practice guidelines. Okay, 
So think about this. Once again, they're, they're talking about once they see that, listen, there is a reaction within the GI with IgGs and therefore, but they're trying to stay within the practice guidelines within IgE. So it's really funny. This is why it's very difficult for the medical matrix to ever change because they have standards. They have standards that they put out there and they can be dramatically wrong, but they sit there and hold to it tooth and nail because then they have to admit that they're wrong. For example, if a woman wants to get an ultrasound done on her breast, they'll say you need a mammogram first. Well, why? It's standard of care. It's our gold standard. Well, guess what? Platinum's better. Move to a better way of doing it. And, but when, when, when it's billions of dollars, they have to give up all those machines and stuff like that because people go, well, there's better technology. So that's the thing. Is there better technology to evaluate the breast than, um, than uh, um, mammograms? Yes, there is. So I'm not saying don't get your breast evaluated. I'm not saying that don't even use a medical device. Because a lot of people say, well, Doc, would you rather see them do a thermography? No, thermography doesn't look at the same things. Please stop comparing that. It actually drives me nuts when the natural field says, don't get notes on, get mammography. I think they're dramatically wrong. I don't have that perspective. I think there's other great diagnostic tools that can help them to just give you a, a much better view with a lot less damage. So, and guess what? And I don't do them. So I'm encouraging people to go to the hospitals and get certain things done because it could be good for the breast. I just disagree with their standard trying to find in their, their practice guidelines. So here we go, let's go back. In light of the current scientific knowledge, the IgD-specific antibody-mediated reactions are a body's natural and normal defense reactions to infiltrating food antigens. Now, once again, antigens are something that do not belong there. So there's a reaction to things that do not belong there. That's why when you do a food allergy test, what happens is this. You don't see everything you eat on there. I get a lot of this. Well, Doc, you know, um, I eat these foods and it shows up in my test and I eat some different foods and it shows up. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you why in a second. But I say, so my question is this, and I say this all the time. Do you eat all the things and they all pop up? No, just some of them. Oh, okay. And a lot of people say this, Doc, I've never eaten this thing ever in my life and I'm allergic to it. Well, based on your culture, have you ever eaten a dog or a cat? You can still react to it. See, you need to deductively think through these things. People go, that's a good point. You're right, I've never eaten a dog, but I'm allergic to him. Never eat a horse, I'm allergic to him. But see, there's when something from that cow or that horse or that, that cat or that dog comes in and bypasses the immune system and reacts to it, even in the most minor way, there can be a response. So here we go. Which are considered as pathogens. Yes, pathogens. IgG responds to the pathogens, but let me show you how you can actually have a food you don't really base to be a pathogen. On your hand, specific IgG antibodies against food allergens play a crucial role in the indication and maintaining an immunological tolerance to food antigens. Once again, something doesn't belong there. The statement of many scientific so, uh, societies stress that IgGs are of no significant importance in the diagnosis of food allergies since their presence is associated with normal immune responses to food allergens and attest to uh, per, uh, protracted exposure to food antigens. Do you see what they said there? I mean, do you get that? It was like talking on both sides of your mouth. Because it's like, yep, their reaction to food allergies, but the whole scientific community says, well, it's because they're doing the food antigens. Antigen is not a good thing. It's not a good thing. It's something that doesn't belong there. The immune system responds to antigens where it says, you do not belong here. The immune system's job is protective in the response to go, listen, this is not a building block. This could be damaging. This is unsafe. You, I cannot use you. You could be harmful. Now, then why, doc? is that sometimes I could do a food allergy test and I can see things avoid, I can even see some change, but then I go back and take another test and there's some of the things they eat there now. It's very simple, it's very easy because the perspective I have when it comes to the immune system, I'm not looking at a food allergy test even the way the medical field does, even the way the natural field does because I have a different perspective and let me show you. Okay, so let's look at this. When I see people come back with reactive things, I sit there, the first thing I think about is, why? Why is the immune system saying, you don't belong here? Okay, let's deduce that. How is it that if I had an apple right here, or I had, let's even use something better, because uh, I've seen this. Um, I've even seen people have IgEs to this, which is, let's say, an avocado. Because once again, an avocado by nature, people understand, is probably one of the healthiest foods, but they can be reactive to it. How? 
I have literally seen people do scratch tests, even put it on your skin. I've seen people lips uh, swell up from an avocado. And then you also get the other amino reactions, IgG, IgA, IgM, EIGD. But here's the point. You sit there and go, why did this thing, when it went from here and into there, it now became harmful? And why did the immune system have to react to it? See, that's why, let's say that you all of a sudden stopped eating an avocado, but then you went to something else and said, well, I need healthy fats. And I started doing olives and olive oil. And next thing you know, olives pop up by an allergy test, even skin, okay, even IgE. Because here's what happens. The immune system says, are you a building block? Are you trying to destroy my cells? Are you trying to do things that don't belong here? Are you good for me? And if it doesn't, it says, I'm just going to attach to you because that's what an IgG or IgE even is. I'm attached to you. So the rest of the immune cells, as you saw, and the rest of the immune cells, and I want to come back to that. Let's look at the last part of the thing there. Okay, let's go back to this one, Travis. Look at the last sentence. Therefore, allergic disease is the result of a complex interplay of immune cells, foreign proteins, and tissue inflammation. Okay? So if you notice, if you notice what happens is the minute that there's a flag like an immunoglobin, the rest of the immune system and the rest of the gear say, hey, hey, let's work together and, and let's remove them. And it might take an inflammatory response, T cells, other antibodies, other organs, increase the blood flow, increase the heart rate. Do you understand that this is actually a medical test? It's called the pulse test for allergies. That the minute that you eat something that's a little bit inflammatory and stressful, your pulse goes up. Pulse goes up. So a lot of times when we evaluate a person as a exam process, I'll say, listen, I want you to eat before you come in. And I want to see what the pulse rate is. It's measurable. I'll get them calmed down, laid down, put the machine on, put the, put the fingers here, oxygen concentration, and go, is your, how is your immune system responding to the last meal that you had? So therefore, let's say that avocado is brought into our system. Now, do you understand that the whole purpose from mouth to rectum is to take something in its whole form, break it down, and then as it gets into our system, it's meant to build it back up into other tissues, including immune tissues. But imagine that you had a bad digestive tract. Imagine that you are six months old and you do not even have a fully digest, uh, developed digestive tract. And now I put an avocado in. So let's say you have a baby. See, this drives parents nuts when I talk about this. If you put a food into an undeveloped and unprepared um, digestive tract, you will create allergic reactions. So that's why when people say, Doc, your video that went viral on, on YouTube and Facebook is when I said, listen, don't feed your kids a food before one year old. How? Because just like this, let's say that a person has a gallbladder problem, all right? A gallbladder problem. That means when the avocado comes in, yes, there's other digestive things that happen, but that, that fat needs to be broken down and absorbed into the system properly because fatty acids belong in the bloodstream. They do, but they have to be broken down. But a lot of people will have intestinal hyperpermeability. A lot of people will have issues where they can pass into the system, the bloodstream, where the body goes, hey, ah, you're foreign. You're not in the state you're supposed to be. I gotta recruit another system to attach to you and get you out. And that creates an allergic reaction. And just because it's not life-threatening does not mean it's not a type two or type three or even type four hypersensitivity allergic reaction. But see, because it doesn't equate to any medical care, even though it's creating inflammation and recruiting other cells, it's still an allergic reaction. And what it can now do is cause immunological responses, hormone responses, inflammatory responses, GI changes, liver changes. And over time, you keep on doing that, that leads to what they call disease. See, so maybe when I look at a test that, that, that shows me an immune response, I go, ah, you might have a gallbladder problem. You might have intestinal hyperpermeability. All of a sudden, if you see yeast a lot on there, well, your yeast overgrowth because you're consuming so much sugar, and all of a sudden you say, well, doc, I have an allergy to yeast. Well, maybe you just consume too much sugar and now your immune system has to respond to it because there's such a big overgrowth. See, having a background in immunology, I always read my textbooks and going, why, do I, why are they always just saying IgE? 
when the immune response is there to protect it from things that don't belong there, and the immune system is going to respond and kind of tell you what's going on. So all I wanted to do was test the immune system, say, hey, how are you responding? Well, I don't like an avocado right now. Okay, so then how do we get an avocado to properly break down from the time it goes in your mouth to pass through there so it's now something beneficial instead of something inflammatory? See, so that's why when I read this stuff, I'm like going, man, you're so misleading the public because you can just look this stuff up. If you look at what an antigen is, let's take a look. Let's take a look what they describe it, okay? Antigens, substances that are capable of stimulating, get a response, an immune response, specifically activating lymphocytes. There's, you know, different T cells, which are the body's infection fighting white blood cells. See, so watch this, come back here. When there's an antigen, it treats it like an infection. It treats it like an infection. That's why a lot of times you can eat a food and get a fever. That's why you can eat a food and you can get exhausted. That's why you can eat a food and have runny nose. That's why you can eat a food and then you can throw up just from being an antigen. Okay, let's go back. In general, two main divisions of antigens are recognized foreign antigens or heteroantigens are autoantigens. Foreign antigens originate from outside the body. Uh, examples include of substances produced by viruses, microorganisms such as bacteria and protozoa, as well as substances in snake venom, certain proteins in foods, and components of serum and red blood cells from other individuals, it means blood donations. Um, autoantigens, on the other hand, originate within the body. Normally, the body is able to distinguish self from non-self, but in persons with autoimmune disorders, normal bodily substances provoke an immune response, leading to the generation of autoantibodies. See, that's a big lie. That's where, like I said, that is still based on the fact that the immune system is independent from the rest of the body. It didn't make a mistake. If your body looked at a tissue and said, you don't belong there, there had to be a flag. The immune system does not travel home. And it's really funny. And you never notice it's not every tissue to buy specific ones. It's, I, I find it so funny that it, they say it attacks normal tissue. Why attack every tissue? See, that's why I kind of laugh when I, when I talk to immunologists and I'll say, okay, why do you say that it's normal tissue? When you know that it has to be flagged for destruction. And the responses are, oh, we just didn't know it flagged it. Well, then let's dig deep. Okay, let's go on. Um, as antigens that induce an immune response stimulate, stimulate the lymph lymphocytes to produce antibodies and to attack, uh, attack the antigen directly is called an immugen. See, so antigens are the things that don't belong there through the process. And that's why if you look, there is a massive role of all the immunoglobins, the role of all allergen specific IgE, G, and IgA, and allergic diseases. And what I kind of want to show you, yes, you can read through, and uh, I, you know, this will be in the notes uh, attached down below and everything. But I just wanted to show you that in the highlight area, due to the engagement of receptors with a highly selective form of IgE, even tiny amounts of allergens can induce massive inflammation. Uh, naturally occurring allergen specific IgG and IgA antibodies usually recognize different um, epitopes, which is actually a, a little receptor on the cells, on allergens com uh, compared with IgE and do not um, efficiently interfere with allergen induced inflammation. However, IgG and IgA antibodies to these important IgE isotopes can be induced by allergic specific immunotherapies by passive immunization. These will lead to uh, a competition with IgE for binding with the allergen and prevent allergic responses. Do you understand what was just said there? Sometimes when there is a pathogen, when there's an antigen, your body will try to get IgE, excuse me, apologize, let me say it again, will try to get IgG and IgA to attach to it so it doesn't get an IgE reaction, so there's no anaphylaxis, there's just an inflammatory response. So IgGs and IgAs in our parts of the immune system have nothing to do with allergies or nothing clinically. I'm like, I just, our medical research, I'm just like, anyway, we can, we can keep going on. Let's take a look. Prevalence of Ig mediated food intolerance among p uh, patients with allergic symptoms. There is the data, but let's re read the conclusion. And once again, you can pull up the full article and if you want to. The detection of a variety of food-specific Ig antibodies among patients with allergic symptoms indicated a possible link to a food intolerance allergy. Females are prone to develop food intolerances 
more than males. That is very true. Men and women are extremely different. Women will always suffer more, and that's a whole other show why I can show you that women by nature will suffer more from hormonal issues, immune issues, and inflammatory issues than men. It's why women have to be more sensitive about their foods, about their stress, and other things, because it will affect them much greater than us. Ladies, I know it sucks. Doc, my husband can just eat anything, and he doesn't have the same reactions. He can even eat crap, and I eat good and sometimes I have reactions. I understand. I understand. I totally understand. I get it. That's why on my show, I will always talk about I'm very empathetic for females because their body is more sensitive than males. And that's not a bad thing because to create life, your body has to be very sensitive. For us to create life, eh, a couple minutes, we're done. <laughs> so simple for us. And we can could, we could produce that stuff like crazy. All right. That being said, what I want to do now is uh, just recap the fact that Dr. Jason and Dr. Jeremy, you did a fantastic job giving a great overview and specifics when it came to the immune system and how it responds. We looked at some of the things over the past weeks, just talking about allergic reactions and what it can lead to. Um, there's multiple things that can, you can do and take that can even relieve certain symptoms, but there's some things you can do to support your immune system and even help it build so you actually have the best response. So you sometimes you don't end up with an IgE, anaphylactic response or death. But what I wanna do now is just kind of recap um, in our products highlight uh, what I did clinically as a practitioner, but also things that people can do at home to actually change some of their reactions that they may be dealing with now. So let's move into our supplement spotlight. All right. Product knowledge. What I always want you guys to do is just share it when I try to teach you the physiology. Then I want to teach you how to build the body. Now, when I was a full-time clinician, which wasn't that long ago, actually, I only started moving really out of full-time practice about five years ago because the company became so big across the world. But the idea is this, is there was things that I did and I was very big. And now let me say this very clearly. I was always very big on testing. I love testing IgE, IgA, IgG, IgM loads. I still like testing that for viruses. I still like testing antibodies for foods. I still like testing the immune response just in general to see where the T cells and B cells are and where the natural killer cells are. See, I always like to see an evaluation of the immune system. And that's why when I do the I Disagree seminar, I'm going to teach you a little bit more about how I said I disagree with the immune response the way it's taught when it comes to the medical field. It's why I had taken a stance as a teenager about the things that even we suffered over the last three years. I've always had a different perspective because when I started to study immunology in college, I was like, even my professors, I'm like, you guys don't make any sense here because you're denying the aspect of how the immune system responds, yet you're trying to manipulate it. Why don't we get it normal? I used to say that to my undergraduate professors. I was like, it didn't make any sense to me. But see, that's the thing. Having multiple voices was always good. Now, Durham, did I play the game and pass my classes? Yeah, that's why I graduated. Okay, but I went down and said, yeah, I'm gonna put this in clinical practice. We talk about doing something. I didn't just say something, I did something to be something. That's why I love that saying. Now, here's just five quick things I think our approach to allergies to start that I think are important. Vitamin D, I think that is by far number one. There's not even anything close. You need to get your labs done. And if you do suffer from allergies, I'd like to see your vitamin D levels between 70 and 90. Um, based on the amount of stress and based on the season you're going through. Nettle, we talked about nettle extensively because it has certain um, constituents in there that can attach certain receptors and even block certain allergens. Albizia, once again, helps um, and inhibit and suppress some of the mast cell production of histamine. Licorice, why would licorice be there? I mean, people say, Doc, what are you talking about, licorice? Well, yes, licorice itself, once again, can support the adrenals for you to produce your own corticosteroids. So it's, it's, it's so like talk about if you have an Ig reaction, guess what happens? You need some synthetic steroid to calm it down or else you're gonna die. Well, I want people to make sure that they have enough corticosteroid produced in their own body, and that's why licorice is a very common thing that they took during time of allergies. But number five, quercetin, because it, once again, we're gonna look a little bit more into quercetin because I see a lot of people take it as a supplement, but you're gonna find about this about me. I'm not big into individualized extracting something as a supplement, I'm not. I like things in a whole food form, I really do. For example, you know, I don't like individual bees um, 
under, unless it's under specific circumstances. I like a full B complex because it can be taken from whole food form and there's things in that B complex that we may not know that even exist yet today. You say, I'm, that's one thing. And for example, a lot of you guys, if I say this vitamin, you won't even know what it is. It's called vitamin P. Now people say, yeah, even Travis is like, you know, because I will teach on it eventually, but vitamin P, and actually the P stands for permeability. That's why vitamin P is very common. But vitamin P is usually attached to all vitamin C's. It really is. So well, why, don't we, why don't we talk about vitamin P a lot? Because they only know so much about it. For example, as we're talking about the hemoglobins, as we told you to, really to remember them, is gamed. G-A-M-E-D. And I've always said this. When people say to me so virulently that they understand everything about the human body, I'm like, okay, what does IGD do? And you're like, what? What does IGD do? And you can ask every immunologist, you can ask any person, if you were to even ask Dr. Fauci to say, you know, what does was IG do? He'd go, well, we have a little idea, but we don't really know. So therefore, would you agree with me though, just because you don't know, doesn't mean there couldn't be a very positive or negative effect if it's low or high. Oh yeah. So don't tell me everything is safe and effective. Don't tell me these things without having, with having a very incomplete about the body. See, when I speak about things, I talk about things that we do know and how it can assist. But the nice thing about what I do the nice thing about what I've done clinically, at least the nice thing is my chance of causing any harm is minimal to none. See, but I also tell people, eh, here's what we're doing, make a choice. So that being said, quercetin, why is quercetin important? Because if you look here, quercetin itself, and it's anti-allergy immune response. As we can see here, as we're going through, quercetin is a great representative of polyphenols, flavonoid subgroup, flavins, its main natural source is foods as vegetables, such as onions. That's why onions want skin. If you ever notice this, onions, when you cut them, guess what happens? You can have, quote, AKA certain immune reactions. You can see that, okay? The most studied quercetin containing food and broccoli. So those two have the most quercetin. Fruits, apples, berry crops, and grapes. Some herbs, teas, and wines. Quercetin is known for its antioxidant activity and radical scavenging of anti-allergic pro uh, properties, categorized by stimulation of an immune system, antiviral activity, inhibition of histamine response, decrease in pro-inflammatory cytokines, and a whole host of other things. You can read all the rest. But the one thing that I will always love to do is this. Does anybody really know why I like herbs over foods? Here, I actually think herbs are better than foods. Agree or disagree? But see, that's why I like them so much because an herb can be extremely highly concentrated with constituents that certain foods are not. If you were to look at certain herbs compared to like, like you just talked about when we look at the two foods of onions and broccoli, there, if you look at the amount of quercetin in certain herbs, it's not even comparable because there are fantastic herbs that have good forms of quercetin, like St. John's. St. John does. But an herb that has a significant amount of quercetin in it is ginkgo. Ginkgo. See, so therefore, that's why when you look at the quercetin, if we go back to this slide right here, um, you're gonna notice that a lot of times I would put things in like vitamin D, nettle, albizia, licorice. And if I wanted to make sure they get enough quercetin in there, I would put ginkgo, St. John's. And there's also some other essential oils that can be used in there that are significant. See, what I was always trying to do as a clinician is not only give something for the body to help alleviate the suffering that the person was going through, but then that gave me time to dig into the immune system to see where the changes, where the stimulants, where the allergens and stuff are to change that person's life long time. See, that's the carpenter perspective of allergens. The medical perspective of allergens is constantly waiting till they have a response and so people are carrying EpiPen. Never find out what their immune system is gonna do. Waiting for them to have some kind of reaction and then picking up the pieces. That's like always waiting to, catch a, uh, to put out a fire instead of preventing fires. The concept of that just doesn't make any sense, so that's why they only focus on one of the immunoglobins, but there's so much more that can be done. So. Our seers on allergies, once again, if you go to thewellnessway.com and click that button, find a clinic, this is what all, they're all taught. From our academy graduates, yes, we have an amazing academy where I just got sick of all the bad teachings out there and I had to teach from our perspective 
And so we have a wonderful academy that all of our academy practitioners, all of our doctors, all of our nurses, all of our medical people, do you understand even the medical people learn this and it makes so much sense to them because I gave them the complete answer. Because you know why? Because having a different, different perspective, being a deconstruct in this when it comes to all things in life and be able to you know, debate and talk about these things. And I would go right to immunologists and I still do. And because once again, that's my, I still my number one love. People don't realize hormones is not my number one love, the immune system is. And I'd sit there and I'd fire questions at them to the point where they're like, oh my goodness, um, why are you asking these kind of questions? I said, because we need a different approach. We need a different way. So go to thewellnessway.com, find your clinic, go check them out. All these doctors are wonderfully taught this stuff. Now, thank you for watching our series on allergies. Um, we have next month is going to be um, mental disorders. Another extremely important thing to me because you guys know my history. The reason why I became a doc because of today, they were, you know, if I would have been the kid back then, instead of calling me a juvenile delinquent, they probably would have diagnosed me as Asperger's. And I can share my journey of what it took me to move out of that. Um, do I still suffer from some things that I did before? Absolutely. I can honestly tell you, um, my skin was always seemed like a crawling different things and it's gotten great through the years, but I can still be triggered by it. And recently, no joke, I can honestly tell you, uh, I, I always did the mammalian dive reflex and putting my face in cold water. I've done that for a long time. But when I was down by my son-in-law, and happy birthday to my wonderful son-in-law, Devin. His birthday was yesterday. I love you. You're incredible. You're a great man. Uh, I'm so thankful that you got to marry my oldest daughter. And like I said, I feel very sorry for Trinity, Calista, and Felicity, my next daughters, because you set the standard, which is great. You know, Sam, because my, my daughter married a manly man, a guy with great manly characteristics, to be able to be a protector and provider. And even though my daughter will become a doctor, she, I've taught my son-in-law, he handles the stress because that's what his body is made to compared to hers. So we're going to talk about a lot of mental disorders. And I was down by him. He just recently got an ice bath. So I jumped in. And I'm not joking, guys. I'm not kidding. Actually, it's probably the most euphoric feeling I felt next to an orgasm. I'm not joking. I was like, okay, here's sex. And then, of course... Here's the response I had. Now remember, it's not, not everybody's gonna have that response. The idea is because it calmed my skin down. I actually can sit in there. I actually sat in there with uh, Travis and uh, Christian because uh, I, I have two of them. Travis jumped in. He, his first time, he made it for about three minutes. I kept on going. Christian jumped in, went to six minutes. And I could have stayed in there longer. And drunk, was it freezing? Yes, ice is going all over, it, very cold. But for some reason with my body, oh my goodness, I get a flood of hormone. And it's like a euphoric feeling and it was just me. And I thought it was a fluke. So I was down by Dr. Devin and, and Faith. And all of a sudden, I went back in that night. Same thing happened. I went back in the next morning. Same thing. And every time I get in there. And it just keeps my skin very calm. Because people don't realize I had such bad immune reactions that uh, affected me psychologically. So the mental uh, conditions and disorders we're going to talk about next month range from autism to depression to everything. Because they can be significant in how it affects the neurochemistry of your brain. Um, now, that being said, let's move into our last 10%. Okay, some final thoughts. Let's look at it again. Let's take a look. There is only one way to avoid criticism. Do nothing, which I cannot do. Say nothing, which I cannot do. And be nothing, which once again, why I'm obsessed with legacy, which we continue to talk about as we continue to do great things for people. And like I said, just as I'm trying to create a legacy, I now have a son-in-law. I know that does in the same, follow the same footsteps as my daughter. And uh, excuse me, he's already a doc. But the idea is this, and hopefully I can create a legacy with other practitioners and other people and the ideas that we shared. Because here's what happens. When it comes to legacy, let's take a look. I really love this. We have often hear the term, leave a legacy. When we, discussing, when we are discussing this word. Well, wow, leaving a legacy may sometimes refer to a personal property or a financial gift that is left behind to a loved one. It most often is a reference to a life of influence. To leave a legacy is to leave a lasting imprint on the world through accomplishments, ideas, and character. So if you think about this, it's a gift. It's a gift. And the idea is this, and I always said this, it's a gift that can be passed down from generation to generation. You don't have to be the one to create the gift. Let me tell you something that I spoke to a medical doctor on the phone the other day. 
he sent me this long thing after my, my um, the, the thing that went viral when it came to um, mammograms. He quietly said, I agree with you, but I can't agree with you publicly. I can't agree with you because um, it'll affect my job. And he said, but I love the ideas you share. I love, and he said to me, he goes, tell me, how did you come up with this? And I will tell you this, and I'm being sincere about this. It was a gift given to me. Doc, you started the wellness way. Uh-huh. Yeah. I started it because an idea was given to me. And the one thing I will always be thankful for my education for. And the idea, once again, transformed everything in my life, which made me have four babies with Christy, which allowed me to open a clinic and change lives like crazy. And the gift actually came from the chiropractic profession. And the medical doctor was like, what? See, that's one thing that is so misunderstood. The gift that I give you guys say, which I call the wellness way, is nothing more than a gift I got from the chiropractic profession that gave me the thinking that yes, that I put into clinical practice because of technology, advancements in labs, all the things that you can look at today that they didn't have even 50, 75 years ago. But those, that gift, that legacy, that the people that started chiropractic, guess what? Shared with me and I just had to continue it because I saw it, what it could do. So the ideas came from one profession. And then I said, how can I, how can I represent the doctors that got jailed for believing this? Because they did. They did. Because when the Rockefellers and medicine became a major business and they realized that they could produce pharmaceuticals out of petroleum-based products, and he started funding medical schools, he, people do not realize the Rockefellers started the American Medical Association. It's always been corrupt. It will always be part of the medical matrix. It's horrible. And so I said, listen, I'm willing to be, go to jail. FBI did show up at my house. I'm willing to stand up and take the arrows. I'm willing to do it. Because why? Because it's given a gift. I got, a, I got a thing for you. Each one of you guys have a gift that you can pass down. You do. And sometimes the gift is not even your idea. This is not my idea. This is not. I, for some reason, people think that I created this idea. I just took and ran with it. That's all I did. And it wasn't like this gift wasn't given to thousands and thousands and thousands of individuals. Because it was. See, that's why as I continue and I train our doctors hard and I train our stuff and I apply all these principles to business, which have allowed me to be very financially and other success and gives me credibility when I, you know, when I go to different business things that have created something this, but it took other people. And see, that's the legacy. The fact is, it's not just for you, it's for everybody. See, I don't want, I don't want the Flynn children, even though, once again, my daughters will have different names, which I'm big on. I think that's fantastic. But the idea is this, is I'm hoping that, and I know, and I'm working towards it every day, that when people talk about me, talk about this, that generations are gonna understand that it was just ideas that I put down. I always find it funny where more children are more looking at other people's gifts instead of the people that they were supposed to follow in the first place, which is their generation. See, so as we continue to actually share these things and create a legacy, you can join with other people's legacies. You really can. And that's why we have our seminar for all the doctors and nurses and medical doctors and practitioners and all the people from across the world and all health professionals and all people are academy that way. We're doing it right here in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Doing it right here in Green Bay, May 11th through 13th. It's the first ever kind of seminar here. We have people from all over the world flying in and bringing all the people for the first time back to a town that created a legacy in football. And Vince Lombardi and other people will be known for a long time, Bart Starr and them because Vince Lombardi had an idea how to run a football team. And that's why they still call it the Vince Lombardi Trophy. See, I think it's great. And, and here's the cool thing is this. I know we have a lot of people that want to volunteer. We still, um, we're, we're packed with volunteers, but if you still want to volunteer to help out and just be part of it, then you don't have to get a ticket and stuff of that. Just you know, contact, uh, um, well, actually we're gonna have a link here come up soon, but uh, you can just contact us if you're local to stop by the Green Bay office and uh, let them know you want to volunteer. But also, there's a lot of people, as we do have, if you've ever been to our seminars, we have the greatest time. We train clinically, 
We do wonderful things. And even if you're a volunteer, you can actually sit through some of the doctor's teachings. You really can and see what they're learning and see how amazing that when our teachers get up there, which are our doctors and practitioners, and they share the clinical things, and you can sit there and see them be taught just like everybody else. So you're more welcome to come volunteer. But also a lot of people say, Doc, I see from your past seminars the events you have and the seminars you have and the parties you do have. Yep, so we do that quite well if you can look. You can go to our website um, and actually sign up. And actually there's two things that we do have on Friday night because the seminar starts actually on Thursday night. But we have a meet and greet with a bunch of the students in the academy and other docs. But on Friday night, we have our tailgate party. You look at all our team right there. It's down at the Johnsonville tailgate party. Um, we're going to have all good, healthy, wellness way approved food. Yes, the, well, the, the Packers and the, the stadium allows us to bring it in. It's fantastic. Um, so we have it through their, their whole situation. So we, people still get to eat great and keep our premises that way. But then what happens is this. There's tickets available for that that you can come and just, and just meet everybody. Then we actually have our Wellness Way Gala. Okay. Um, since we have a, a big bunch of food on tailgate, there is a charge for it. But our Wellness Way Gala, if you are local and want to dress up and be on the red carpet, and no joke, there will be some paparazzi there and everything like that, come to our gala. Just got to get a ticket. Ticket's free. So if you're local and you want to celebrate with us, we have a beautiful dance and party and everything like that. You can meet some of the greatest doctors across the world and come to this. So the tickets, very simple. If you go to it, there's a website. Uh, Travis will put the link down below. And once again, as you see, there's a charge for the tailgate one because there's incredible food that we are having. But if you want to come celebrate us with the gala, just there's, once again, it's at the Packer Stadium. So it's kind of great, an iconic place that created a legacy in a place that we can actually celebrate that's big enough to hold not only us as all the practitioners across the world, but a gala with the people that uh, um, are local or even within the state of Wisconsin. Or if you want to fly in and hang out with some of the greatest practitioners in the world, you're more than welcome to get a ticket. It's free. But the only thing is this, guys, God looks snazzy. Girls will be in beautiful dresses, long dresses. And um, just think of it, I tell people, this is kind of like the Oscars for the wellness way. Um, it'd be kind of cool, dress up, good night. You can wear a tux, guys. You can, you can wear a beautiful suit. I'll be all, I'll be all dressed up. I'm not gonna share what my outfit's gonna look like yet, but it's gonna be absolutely fantastic. So it's kind of cool. And you're on. My two older daughters will be there in their beautiful you know, gala dresses as they become you know, um, from young girls to great young ladies to great women. Um, it's kind of cool because they watch their daddy and other people, you know, contribute so much, not worrying about what people say, not worrying about the reactions, but just being and doing something that can go on for generations. And that's legacy. So thank you so much guys for joining us this last month of April when it came to allergies. Next month, like I said, is very important to me. It's not only personal, but also I know a lot of people suffer from very bad mental disorders and it's very sad. Um, and it's not getting any better. The prediction last time I read in the stats for writing my next week's talk was $2.5 trillion is spent worldwide and they suspect by within the next couple of years it's gonna be six trillion. That means we have to have different perspective because we're going in the wrong direction. All right, we'll see you guys next week. Thank you always for watching. My name is Dr. Patrick Flynn and thank you so much for watching A Different Perspective. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a single video or live stream. Each week on A Different Perspective, we bring you the most cutting edge information on health you won't find anywhere else. For more information on this topic, please visit our website. A Different Perspective offers life-changing information and resources to share and explore. A Different Perspective is leading a health revolution.